Welcome back to New Mobile, and if you're just joining us, Watson sent some random Joe Schmo who was just passing by to find and shut down a faulty generator instead of, oh, sending a repairman to take care of the job. But I digress. Remember that uh, crappy article that uh, Bulba Garden hosted last month? Well, Bulba Garden this month has a counterpoint up that I'm going to link to in the movie description. Basically, if you didn't see the original article, it was about how Pokemon was so much better back then than it is now and is only any good when revisiting its past, which is utter bullshit. And the rebuttal this month comes from an article that's mostly about Generation 3's undeserved status as a black sheep. Now, I've mentioned that multiple times, but the article is a lot better written than the previous one. It's a lot more objective, and it especially focuses on how uh, Game Freak decided to ditch compatibility between Generations 2 and 3, so that Generation 3 could actually move forward with the series instead of just staying the same, you know, even more than it already is. People criticize Pokemon because it's too samey, but at the same time they had to... Oh! Here's the generator, so... St stepping on the switch and the generator stopped from a switch being on the ground and not on the machine itself. Well, I suppose... Um... No, this doesn't make any sense either. Why isn't the switch on the freaking machine? Wow! An electrode! That is quite a rare sight. I checked on the Poke Earth and Magneton and Electrode. Well, they both have a one-person chance of appearing in New Mobile, and it, it outspeeds me even. Though that's not really a surprise, even with a 13-level disadvantage, Electrode is still one of the fastest Pokémon out there. But yeah, as for that article, it mentions the fact that many people think that uh, g the Generation 3 Pokémon have the worst designs in the in the game. Something that I don't necessarily agree with. At one point, one point that I really agree with. On the other end, can say, okay, when it comes to the design of those. Uh, those Pokemon is that some of them are way too closely related to previously existing Pokemon. The Wormple and Corefish uh, lines, for example, come to mind. Why make Wormple if Caterpie and Weedle could have done the job just as well? It's not like anyone's ever gonna use Beautifly or Dust Talks, whereas maybe Butterfree wouldn't be such a bad choice. Butterfree is by far the best of all the level 10 bugs that exist so far. I, would, I wouldn't use one on a competitive team, mind you, but it still punches way above its weight, which is the reason why I like it so much. And I press this with- OH MAN! I, I shouldn't have pressed it uh, on second thought. Remember in the last video when I said there are some switches in the, uh, in the place that are better left alone? Well, this is one of them, so I'm gonna have to press the blue one. Not that it really matters because I only took two or three steps before uh, figuring it out, but I still encountered another freaking wild Voltorb while doing it. And I... you know that video that uh, turned out to be a... Uh, Featured on Chugga's videos. I'm gonna come back to this later, but part 99 of um, Pokemon Crystal. I often got asked by Chugga by a Chugga people who found their way there. Why is it that I'm not using repels to uh, actually repel those wild Pokemon? Well, I've mentioned it several times before, including in the movie description of that particular video. But if you still manage to miss it somehow, wasting money in order to waste experience is not really my thing. It's not a smart thing to do, especially since if you run away from everything, then you're still going to be forced to grind at some point, especially for the Elite Four. How many times have I seen people said, oh, I'm forced to grind for the Elite Four in Hard Gold or Soul Silver? Recently, I've heard that a lot. Whereas if you do things like I do, not running away from any fight at all, then the grinding you'll need to do is going to be minimal or maybe even non-existent. Look, look at my LPs. I have never needed to grind for a particular boss fight, though I have taken 
some precautions in some cases. For example, uh, in with Whitney and Crystal, I did everything that was humanly possible to be done before fighting with me and it definitely paid off because I think I was this close to actually nailing a one-hit K on her mill tank. Whereas Chugga, for example, he actually needed to cut part of the battle out because it was dragging on for so long. And speaking of Chugga, you know that Chugga storm of sorts that struck my channel recently? Well, I think it's starting to subside because uh, part 99 of my crystal video is no longer at the top of every Pokemon video he makes, so my views have slowed down a little bit, so did the subscriptions, but anyhow, that boost was worth at least a thousand subscriptions, which ironically is about half of what I have right now. And thanks to that boost, sometimes I'm even in uh, the top 100 uh, Canadian visited channels. And I'm surprised at how low the requirements are to be in the top 100 Canadian channels. Though I imagine that to be in the top 100 American channels, on the other hand, that's got the requirements are going to be a lot bigger than that. So yeah, while well, I was talking about that, we're out of New Mobile, so now I'm going to uh, see, to talk to Watson to claim my reward. I already got a Thunderstone back in New Mobile. Not that I'm going to need it, but if you want the Thunderstone, that's the way to go. And he gives me the Thunderbolt TM, which is going to be used on Reg Ice later on once I catch it. And that's also why I didn't wait until this point to give one to, to Gardevoir. Instead, I went to the game corner, and now I'm just going to sell a few items I found, the mech mail, and I'm going to deposit the, the Thunderstone and the, the, the escape rope in the PC, and I'm also going to take uh, my Pokemon for a little healing session, since, hey, free healthcare, just like in super effective, in fact, and after that I'm going to deposit those two items, and after that we're finally finally going to go to Fortree. So let's recap, shall we? I fought Norman on part 50. Now I'm at part 59. That means I spent the, the last nine videos doing totally optional stuff. Now keep in mind that there's gonna be loads of stuff that are going to open up to us once we're gonna get the seventh badge. So this this side questing session we had right now, it's nothing at all compared to what awaits us after I beat Lisa and Tate. And as I said, I would have put Skarmory back as my lead since it's starting to lag behind in terms of levels behind the uh, Gardevoir and Blaziken, though I'm going to need to go back to Blaziken at some point. And oh, hey, look who's there. It's Yabby and Ty for our second battle. Uh, of six, by the way. That this is the second spot you can find them on. If you remember, we encountered them for the first time just north of Moville on Route 111. And Yabby's. Uh, no, it's. Is it Ty's? Um, Loudred. It was a Whismur last time, and now it evolved into a Loudred. The text makes it a little confusing. I don't know whose Pokemon is which. But yeah, the third spot where you can find the map is going to be on Route 120, just past Fortree. And uh, you can, after that, you can rotate between those three spots and they'll be there. Uh, you can fight a second round of battles where their levels will still increase and, until they end up at their final forms at level 39. And after that, you can fight them over and over and over forever and ever for excellent money. Just now, I obtained $2,600 for only the second fight, so imagine when they're going to be level 39, that's going to be really good money, probably the best source of money in the game, in fact, aside from maybe Elite Four runs, but these ones are a lot quicker. Well, that's going to be it for today, so next time on Pokemon Emerald, we're actually going to get a move on and try to get closer to Fortree City.